Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining us uh, in the session on how to build a community of change makers. I will shortly uh, present myself. Uh, I am based in Pristina now and uh, I, was, I am a psychologist by profession, but I was working with youngsters and with different initiatives uh, for more than 10 years now. And uh, the reason why we are we are here in this session is together to go to some basic steps on how to build a community of change makers. I would really love to have met you uh, in person, but uh, even in this way, I think it's a good opportunity for us to change uh, to exchange our ideas uh, and our concepts on. How how to be uh, how to be uh, change makers i would really like to know you and our, uh, since uh, also anna mentioned we are online here and uh, we would like to uh, make it very quick presentation uh, of uh, each of you i would like you to open up a camera and a mic and just be reminded that for 40 seconds uh, you will um, present yourself who you are and what's your passion? This is two main questions that each of you would uh, present and will know each other. Hello, so I can start. Um, my name is Susanna Skoczek and I'm from the NGO that uh, basically empowers true cooking. Uh, but my own passion in that is connecting people and merging them together for the common cause. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Yulia Kokoyachuk, and I'm from Ukraine, Lviv. Um, I like to travel and communicate. Probably it gets me the most wisdom I have in my life. Thank you. Hirieta. <laughs> Hi. Hi. We are Nusha and Durska. Uh, we are from NGO, uh, Kings, Kings of the Street. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we work on an anti-eviction program, So, and we also have some uh, resettlement for the homeless people. And uh, I think uh, our passion the most is to work with uh, children that uh, come from endangered environments. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Jorcek. I'm from uh, YMC Vitola. Uh, we are uh, in a process of, let's say, uh, building a better community because uh, on various topics it's a little bit difficult to engage uh, young people. So I hope to learn a lot from uh, this session. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I am Levani. We are a small community uh, NGO from Georgia. We are working in a small region of Kacheti, and uh, we would like to know more about building a community of uh, change makers. Thank you, Levani. Don't forget to mention your passion when you <laughs> when you present yourself. Hi, Olga. Hi, I'm Olga from Civis Polonos Foundation, is one of organizations that is, that is a partner in Game Changer project. Um, and we work on empowering uh, the voice of young people in public space and want to give them more power and really more voice in uh, important issues. And that's why we uh, took part in the project. And my passion is hmm, to find some free time for uh, yoga and uh, reading, which is not that easy. And I'm happy to take part now here with you in this workshop. Thank you, Olga. Hello, hi. My hi. name is Kasia and I'm from Poland. And my passion is uh, work in uh, sports with the kids. And we have an NGO supports um, single mothers and the kids from the foster care to come back to community. I can see that we are uh, about 40 people here, but if you would like just to uh, write your uh, presentation in the in the chat, don't forget to write here uh, in the chat section when it's written. Um, 
session, not the event. Do we have anybody else that would like to introduce themselves? Yes, we have uh, Laura. Yes, hi. hi. Um, I'm Laura, I come from Italy and uh, I'm a psychologist and psychotherapist. And my organization work in the field of well-being and youth work. And I live in Florence and the organization is in Florence. And my passion is to read and to um, and to meet people great thank you laura we have some some uh things in in common <laughs> yes we have uh human all others i would like you to to write down your passion and your name if you would like in the chat session and we will continue today uh and i will i'm going to present you with uh, um with the with the agenda how we are going to organize this um one hour and 50 minutes from now uh, on how to build a community of change makers so i'm going to um share my screen okay here we go we'll have a three minutes video and we'll be back with a discussion Hvem er bonusforældre? And then suddenly, there's us. We who believe in life after death. We who've seen UFOs. And all of us who love to dance. We who've been bullied. And we who've bullied others. And then there's us, the lucky ones who've had sex this past week. We who are broken hearted. We who are madly in love. We who feel lonely. We who are bisexual. And we who acknowledge the courage of others. We who have found the meaning of life. And we who have saved lives. And then there's all of us who just love Denmark. So maybe there's more that brings us together than we think. TV2 Denmark. All that we share. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I am also reading your your uh, comments in the chat, and I'm very pleased to be here with you. Also, I would like to give the floor uh, to um, Matteo for a short introduction. He will be our special guest today in the in this uh, in this workshop. Matteo. Hello. Thank you very much um, for the opportunity. I've actually just written my my bio in the chat. I wish I'd held off for a minute. 
but hi everyone um pleasure to meet you meet you and um looking really looking forward to the session and your presentation uh, siana um my name is Matteo bregamini and i run an organization called shout out uk uh we're a youth network that tries to get more young people <coughs> excuse me more young people involved and engaged in politics by running political literacy and media literacy programs in secondary schools and, and colleges. Uh, political literacy being the kind of bare bone basics, or understanding the bare bone basics around how our democracy functions, so understanding things like voting systems, how our parliament creates laws, the role of the monarchy, et cetera. And then media literacy, uh, which I believe, Siana, you're gonna be talking about a little bit later, uh, is around how to critically analyze the information we receive yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but of course the UN has declared an infodemic. Coronavirus has done nothing um, to help the misinformation landscape. In fact, it's created more mis and disinformation probably than, than we've ever seen in recent years. And it's super important for us all to understand how to do basic fact checking, how to be critical thinkers around information, be it online and offline, and also how to make sure that we check our own biases because our critical uh, thinking skills tend to uh, slow down or go lower when we want something to be true. Um, my passion is judo. That's me. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo, for your presentation. And please feel free to uh, add comments uh, anytime when we are presenting. So I will also now uh, continue to share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, great. Today we are going to talk, talk about how to build a community of change makers and we'll talk about three main skills. I would really like to uh, be uh, this, uh, this presentation to be very interactive. So at any time that you will have question or would like to share something on the, the skill that we are going to mention, uh, you can uh, write it down in chat or uh, ask for uh, ask to 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 talk. A uh, quick question: Do you know which country has the youngest population in Europe? Since we are talking about young people, since we all of us uh, work. Oh my God! Very very. It was a second. <laughs> Uh, great, thank you, Marius, uh, the first one, Zoran, and Anna, and uh, Hirieta. Uh, so it's, it, it is Kosovo, and uh, it is, uh, we have the youngest um, population in Europe with 278 uh, uh, and uh, while the world average age is 29.7. Uh, uh, I also will share this uh, PowerPoint with you and you will have sources here uh, for, for uh, this information. And since we are uh, in Kosovo, I would like, to, and talking for Kosovo, I would like to share some uh, facts, some fun facts for you that you haven't been uh, here and uh, you will have it maybe once you will come here and visit the Balkans. Uh, just make sure that you will know those three fun facts. In Kosovo, it's a thing called besa, when uh, you give someone uh, the word that you will never, uh, uh, to, that you, uh, you will give the word that I will never say this to anyone else. And it is a strong thing that people believe it. And if I will shake your hand and say besa, the world will, will, would never go uh, to anybody else. Another fucked fan is if you come to Kosovo, you must eat if you will be sitting in a table with me, my parents or my family or friends, you must eat. There is no way you can go uh, out and say that uh, I, I, I'm not hungry, you must eat. And the third uh, fun fact uh, is that you have to fight to pay. Uh, yeah, and um, it's funny that it's the same in Poland, I can see from uh, um, um, chat, you have to fight if you come here and you are out for a beer, for coffee or any other drink, you should fight to pay because they will never let you pay. It's the same uh, in Georgia and in Slovenia too, yeah. There are a lot of things that we have in common uh, and uh, uh, that's, that's the, the beauty, the beauty of it. And also in Italy, yeah, great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Okay, 
Now uh, we will uh, go uh, into the first step, which is identify social need. So all of us, we are uh, in um, different, um, uh, different, uh, I am reading, uh, and Portugal, nobody wants to pay. Okay, welcome here, welcome to this part of Europe. <laughs> uh, uh, most of us, uh, so we have Aga, you want to say something? Aga? We can't hear you, unfortunately, we just can't see you. Finally, I managed to connect, so. Great. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, okay, so we are going uh, into the first uh, step that is identifying uh, social need. So uh, being um, a change maker will uh, lead you to different changes starting from yourself. So there are some times when we think that there is something that we need to change about ourselves and also that we can change in, in the society. But doing it, we should start with uh, uh, identifying social need. What I'm going to share with you now uh, uh, is the... Um, I'm, um, I will ask you to take a second, uh, not a second, a minute, and to think and identify in your head uh, what are uh, the, the basic needs that you uh, need to fulfill to have a happy life, a joyful life? Mm -hmm. And uh, based on what you are going to write uh, here in the chat room, I'm going to create a table with uh, all your uh, opinions. Think of Jenny. yeah, Matteo, please. No, I was just I was just gonna I was just gonna give um one one example that I sort of thought of that one basic social need um <clears throat> is kind of like a um a society where you can exist without facing prejudice. Yeah. Based on skin color, religion, um, ethnicity, whatever, nationality, whatever it may be. Yeah. I think it's one. Feels kind of basic, but a lot of people, a lot of people tend to struggle with that one for some reason. Work. Yeah, I'm going just to, to write uh, work life balance in the screen. So it's work. Balance. Feel safe in community. So safety, do we have safety here? It's security, I will. It like this. Um, <clears throat> Love, friends, family. I, we have love, we have so put friends, family. I tell you, if you can read some of the uh, things. In yeah, the sure, but they're coming in fast. So uh, acceptance, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've got acceptance, community sense, so sense of community. A sense uh -huh. of belonging, I'm guessing. Uh, peace, uh, a purpose, that's quite a nice one. Having a purpose, uh, be it your passion or your work. Uh, acceptance, again, um, time for your close ones. So I think that comes into kind of work-life balance quite nicely. Family, friends, yeah. Mm. We have um, yeah. Home, ability to self-develop, so self-learning, the ability to progress, I guess. Uh, that's quite a nice one. Uh, Me too. Anything else? I think we've got uh, freedom, we've got dignity, compassion, ability to self-develop, yep. Uh, we've got compassion's a new one. Mm -hmm. And then one's hidden because a couple of people have entered. Ah, here we go. Ability to communicate. Communicate. Ability to communicate, so communication. Uh, we've got empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, empathy is a good one. Yeah. I think if we all as a society had a bit more empathy, we wouldn't be facing yeah. half the problems we're all facing right now. I agree. Um, so empathy said twice, <laughs> probably should be written twice. 
happiness. Happiness. happiness? Okay. I feel like it's come up, come up before. Um, yeah. I'm just going up to see if we've missed any ones. No, I think happiness. Yeah. Much it. I think that's everyone. Happiness, empathy, compassion, compassion, ability to self-development, sense of belonging, acceptance, family, friends, balance, work, health freedom traveling environment love justice security safety parents family so we have twice um food okay great so if if we um peace okay i will also add peace uh very important um if we would like to uh first of all identify the needs of the society we should uh the the, the how we we organize it as we gather uh, people that have the same cause and they uh they uh they fighting and they are passionate about that the 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 reason why i asked you in the beginning of the session what is your passion is that because running a campaign of change maker or becoming a change maker you should need a passion to move on because there will be a lot of struggles in in uh in the street and a lot of uh um, challenging the challenging challenges that you will face so uh this will be as as a, a basic a start identify the basic needs for all uh, our uh group members to um to say what are our basic needs i think here we're listed about 30 uh, of them now what we are going to do is i would like to ask you to uh, write it down in a paper or on your phone uh, five of your needs from this uh, this piece that we have uh, ident that we did here identifying so our social needs so you need to pick one of those needs basic needs that we wrote down in this we you just need to select just five of them write it down in a paper or on your phone and now we'll take all of those five basic needs and we are going for a trip with the boat and uh we are going to another land so we are leaving our land when we are here and we are taking the boat to go to another land and uh, unfortunately the weather it's not very good and it's not supporting us and we need to let down one of our piece of papers that we took with ourselves so from five needs you are going to let down one of them I know that it is difficult. I know that some of you will break your heart by leaving, for example, free time or what we food or anything that you were picking in the beginning. But it's a must because we would like to be to go there in the in that land. And going by the boat the weather it's again against us so now you need to take down the second one that you choose in the beginning now you have to move on with only three basic needs now the situation will will you are fighting with yourself do i need food do i need travel it's a family a must to take with me in the next uh, destination in the land in the new land we have those dilemmas every day and we are about to go there but again our boat is shaking and they, we are 44 people in this boat and we need to take down also another need and we are going only with two basic needs in the land so I want you to remove all the five needs and I want you to share with me what are your two basic needs. 
you can do it in the chat or you can um, say it out loud. I'm not going to lie, it was hard. Um, but I ended up sticking with freedom and justice, I think, with the two ones. Although food came a close third. We've seen a load of people coming in with theirs. Okay. Um, so we've got love and justice from Zoran. We've got peace and freedom. Freedom and justice. Jasmine in the same one. Love and family. Environment and sense of belonging. Dignity and love. Work and balance. Friends and freedom. Purpose and health. Let me know if I'm reading these out a little bit too quickly. <laughs> Uh, empathy and but they're coming in really quickly. Empathy and balance. Empathy and balance. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've got community, uh, community sense, uh, so sense of community and openness. Food and empathy. I was wondering mm -hmm. where, when food would come up. Food's a difficult one. It was a close third for me. Uh, <laughs> love and friendship. We've got love and friendship. Uh -huh. uh, purpose and compassion. So a purpose and compassion. Uh, someone went for four. Love and peace, empathy and communication. And we need just two. Just read me the two first ones. I'm going to go for the two first ones. So love and peace. Uh, oh, love and balance from Anna. Uh, so love being a frequent, frequent returner. Mm -hmm. uh, environment and self-development. Uh, we've got empathy and freedom. Empathy and justice. Um, okay. Uh, and then Olga went for just family. Family. Susanna, Susanna said, ah, there are two girls where the slash is. Ah, my apologies. My apologies. Those are two different people. Um, my bad. Ah, I'll okay. go back and read those out. So the other one is, so love and peace is um, one of the people. Empathy and communication is another person. My bad, my apologies. Thank you, uh, Zuzana, for correcting me on that. Love and um, peace the second one? And the second one is empathy and communication. Right. And that's from Nusa. Uh, last one, Adina, we've got safety and empathy. And uh, if you are doing this with, with your group or, or within your organization, you should um, focus on um, the needs of the intervention that you will like to do in your community. By doing this, we can, uh, um, you can uh, make the story with a boat even more dramatic and even more uh, specific by going down and having just one basic need uh, or whatever the purpose of your change will be. Uh, and you will slowly go down and slowly get in the, um, in the shape of uh, uh, identifying the need of the society and the change that you and your group and your organization will will uh, will make, right? So going back to our uh, uh, our um, uh, piece of paper here in the wall, uh, I would like to identify our group uh, uh, social need uh, by uh, having a top five most uh, frequent. So Sienna, we've got one more, I believe. Um, Self-development and peace. I don't know if we can add one more from. Um, right. Not to make the next part that a little bit more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we'll have uh, top five needs. Uh, or maybe top three because top five it's uh, quite a lot. <laughs> so we'll make top three needs uh, on uh, our our group that uh, we we are here. Uh, I can see that love is mentioned um, at least four times. Yeah. Yeah, four times. Oh, five times. Five times. My apologies. Great. Five times. I see that empathy was really uh, one, two, three, four. 
Five times. Okay. There's one empathy on the left as well. Thank you. Needless to say, I think empathy is definitely up there. Yeah. Oh, what will balance appears a couple of times as well. Yeah. Um so does purpose. Purpose appears twice. Uh -huh. I believe. And balance is three times, right? Balance is uh one, two twice. Twice. Doesn't help. We have it <laughs> <laughs> three times mentioned uh, communication, balance, peace. I think, yeah, but yeah, you can like you I get think we can put balance, yeah, <laughs> to put more one, uh, one more in balance. So, I uh, I would uh, suggest you to use the um, to use the opportunity and to discuss with your uh with your team uh and to be more specific and going from the three top three uh needs to the first one i'm going now to move to um a real life change uh that happened in uh in pristina and i'm going to uh present now to continue to my, with my uh powerpoint presentation um just give me a few seconds Can you can you see my screen? Yeah, great. Um, three elements to consider uh, if you want to encourage a civic engagement. I'm doing this by presenting you uh, uh, this uh, project that uh, was implemented in Pristina, and the name is Making Sense Project. You will have the all the um, links of the project and everything that I'm talking today sent to your to your emails. So how we started this, we started by identifying the needs back in 2018. Uh, what were uh, we we could we could see uh, the people were talking the me the media there were some news is that that the, uh, we are facing a lot of uh, health health issues uh, with our uh, um, uh, our court and everybody was getting sick very free very frequently and we didn't know uh what was going on but uh the the very basic need uh, for us is to be in a good health condition i think this is very important and i think uh, also this uh, du during this time of covid we we could uh we could uh see how important it is for us to be in a good shape and also to have a um, a uh, clear mind and to have a, a good mental health. And uh, we were uh, in with a group of uh, youngsters, we identified that uh, something that is really bothering us is the air quality in Pristina, Kosovo. So uh, unfortunately, we have the very, very bad air quality, especially during the winter, uh, winter uh, season when um, the way how it uh, the way how it it's built uh, the city is near the the power plants and the air quality is very very bad. I'm going here to mention uh, three of the the steps uh, that helped a very small initiative from ten people in one room uh, to be uh, a giant as everybody in the country was talking about this. Everybody in the country was aware and we were all putting masks two or three years ago before, before COVID, just to protect uh, uh, the, uh, our, um, ourselves. Uh, we started with, uh, with uh, gatherings uh, in a small office and doing some, um, the some um uh, ideas on how we can uh, brainstorming <laughs> i couldn't remember brainstorming on how we can have um 
uh, an impact on uh, uh, on our society how to make people aware that the air quality is killing us slowly so uh, our approach was that we were um having those weekly meetings you can do it now online you can have those um i don't know padlet and also other uh features that uh online platforms can offer you and do the same thing uh online as we did uh offline with our campaign we were thinking on how was the right thing to do so people will all know how important it is to take care of uh, our uh, what what we breathe and we started with those man, uh, those figures in the main square in pristina uh, they were every, everywhere in Pristina. We started at six o'clock when nobody was in the main square. We put in the mannequins. We dressed them up as we are going in the work or something, and we put in masks. Uh, it was the first time that people were like all around looking, what are the, those people with those masks out there? So it's very uh, important to, to have um, uh, people that care about the same cause as we did with those youngsters about our health and then to have those ideas on how to um to approach uh people and uh after we, they had those uh they they saw those uh mannequins out there they were all coming to uh our session and, uh, out there and asking what can we do what can we do to protect ourselves uh from uh from uh, air air quality and uh, uh we uh, also uh, organized uh, uh something like this which was again in the main square when we were playing um music we, this number 835 is the number of people dying from uh, the bad air quality and also we were using winter is coming uh, that is uh, the the famous uh, the famous quote uh, from a very famous uh, uh, TV series. And uh, so we were trying to get people's attention a lot by those campaigns. And from starting from uh, starting from the office like this, we ended up uh, doing a very large protests and uh, like a thousand, a thousand people were uh, in the protest and they were uh, uh, asking for, um, um, the the political parties to make changes in the law that they can protect us uh uh from um from the the air quality i would like uh to uh ask you as this the is this the the same uh approach that you are using that you use to your uh any of your project and uh is there any project that you would like to share with with us today that has the same impact or that followed the same uh um the same uh structure and whilst we're oh we've got one please feel free to share your audio and video for this purpose Whilst we're waiting for, <coughs> excuse me. Whilst we're waiting for someone to uh, uh, to maybe join us and share their experience, I thought I'd um, quickly share mine. And thank you for um, for, for for sharing that. I think is it, is it, we we in the UK use a very similar um, process of cause um, approach and then looking at the target group. So one of the things that we did um, just very quickly for the December uh, 2019 uh, general election is that we saw that there was a a large group of young people. Um, from specifically sort of low uh, social, low socioeconomic backgrounds, so low income backgrounds that weren't engaging and weren't registering to vote and then voting. Because in the UK, you have to register to vote before you can vote. Um, so we got a, a group of young people together from our target demographic, and it was all done digitally. Mm -hmm. Actually, so we focus groups digitally using Google Hangouts, but you can use any platform imaginable. Um, in a similar way that what you did in an office, um, and we came together and realized that there were a couple of influencers that were doing quite a lot of interesting things in this space, politically orientated space, one of mm -hmm. which was a rapper called the Drill Minister, um, who was talking about politics um, in his songs and his raps, and we ended up talking to him and partnering with him uh, on a project to essentially get a drill track around registering to vote. 
little different, a little bit uh, different to, to the normal kind of getting in people to register to vote campaigns. Um, we managed to get um, him to do a song. It ended up on a bunch of different platforms um, like Uniland Sound or whatever else. They did, they did quite well. The song um, got quite a lot of traction. And then we organized off of the back of that with him a concert for young up and coming rappers to do something similar about the importance of getting involved in politics. It was a completely different way of, of tackling the issue of getting uh, young people engaged, but it does work. And if you listen to, as you say, your target demographic, if you listen to the people that you're after, um, then you get a much more impactful uh, program. Um, so your process, as you mentioned, does, does very, very much, uh, very, very much work. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's really important uh, what, what you mentioned is that uh, people that you engage, so the, the target mm -hmm. people that you engage, to listen to their ideas yeah. and to include their ideas within your, your, your platform, within your um, uh, change that you want to make in, in the society, mm -hmm. because they are them facing also uh, the, 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 these difficulties. And we had a lot of uh, other uh, initiatives, uh, small ones, till mm. we we took this uh, uh, till we took this giant um, um, media coverage. Everybody was asking, and everybody was because nice. yeah, you can you can make them uh, feel uh, feel uh, the same because you will give them. Uh, we were also having some um, uh, 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 some um, uh, materials uh, that they can uh, they could uh, measure air quality by themselves. It's not it's mm. not because sometimes you are not going to uh, uh, join a community of change makers just because you think that it's um, uh, it's for scientists it's very complicated yeah. I cannot be a part of this but if you give people space and if you give them the opportunity to explore and to see that they can they can do that they can also be a change maker just by being a part uh, part of the the mm -hmm. Those were those were the 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 stuff that really worked, and it was the right momentum because it was mm -hmm. winter, uh, and uh, everybody was dealing with the with the, the the cough and the sickness, and it was the right moment to get out and say that we need a change. We need those things to to, to change. Yeah, no, definitely. I think this is quite two two things that were really interesting that you mentioned. One was that inclusivity the need for inclusion making sure that your your thing's not exclusive it doesn't come across as exclusive even though you don't need it to be or you don't mean it to be rather and making sure that it is um relevant to the time because for us it was obviously near a general election so there was that relevance and for you it was the right time it was winter and therefore all of those kind of things kind of align so you got to make sure you plan the timing really well uh, i think we've got someone that wants to share their uh yeah Uh, we have Dorota. Dorota? Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, we've got Olga as well. Yeah. So I would like just to interrupt you and to tell you that Dorota is our videographer, uh, graphic recorder actually, and she's making notes out of your discussions and presentations. So you can <laughs> see her work in the meantime just by clicking double that you will zoom in uh, her work and we will just show from time to time what's on her plate and i'm leaving you with olga thank you Anya. that makes that makes a lot more sense um thank you for that Great. um yeah. olga yeah i want to share my experience uh, uh with my um, favorite um from one of my favorite projects um, basically, we work uh, on uh, empowering uh, the voice of young people and ch children in public space. And we are really following this really same structure uh, as, as you mentioned in your project. So now first we try to identify the needs and they to then support young people and children to make a difference. Yeah. And this uh, example I want to share was um, was from the project that uh, we we ran a few years ago in rural areas mm -hmm. and it was addressed to children. And exactly, we asked teachers and uh, of uh, children from the first grade, 
So it's like six, seven years old. First, mm -hmm. identify the situation and problems of children in their small rural community. Yeah. And one of the problems that they identified was the uh, lack of the roof in the, on the bus stop. So the small children, uh, f um, when they waited for the bus, they got wet in uh, autumn season. Mm -hmm. And that was really a problem. But, um, you know, the um, mayor and adults who uh, co uh, commute with their own cars uh, mm -hmm. couldn't really see this as a problem. So we'll, uh, the teachers learned that taught the children that the person who is responsible on the local level for such an issue is the mayor. So you should go to the mayor and talk about your problem. And really, the, the ch children, the teacher uh, went to him uh, for a meeting. They yeah. presented the problem. And the mayor, of course, said, you know where he, he was really touched by the fact that uh, this small children let's imagine a six-year uh, citizen coming to the mayor mm -hmm. and uh, claiming for a solution in this crucial issue like being so the, he, uh, of course, said, of course, of course, we will find some money to uh, make a change. And those mm -hmm. small children really made the important difference for themselves and for the small community. And for me as a youth worker, it's so important to really encourage uh, children and mm -hmm give them opportunity to uh, exercise their power, their voice, their influence, so they get them uh, more uh, courage when they are older to fight for bigger issues. Let's start with, with small issue in your community and then fight for biggest things. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Olga, for, for sharing it. As I was mentioning in the beginning, uh, change makers, you can start from yourself and you can start for, from your family, a very small group of people, a youth uh, and children's uh, perspective, as you mentioned. And also there are some initiatives that can have, uh, uh, they, they started with one or two people and they can have a, a giant, giant impact in the society. Uh, thanks again. Uh, we have also uh, Levani. Yep. Uh, yeah, I wanted to share our project. Uh, and we have the same, more or less the same problem as Olga mentioned, with the low level of in involvement uh, in the local self-governance in our region. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to tackle that problem and we created a uh, platform online website uh, called uh, initiative.g and uh, the local people they could uh, sign up there and um, submit their ideas and their problems that they had uh, in relation with self-governance and their day-to-day -day problems and we had the uh, three or four uh, representatives from the self-government and they were uh, reviewing the problems and there were discussions how they could uh, resolve those issues and it worked really well it was uh, like all anonymous you could type in your problem what you thought that was an important issue and then they were reviewing it and possibly like yeah great, great. thank you uh, thank you levani for for sharing that uh i can see that there are uh, also some comments um okay great uh do we have uh, anybody else to uh, share their initiative and how yeah a question for levani i believe okay. um was it the bespoke platform Okay, great. Matteo, anything you would like to uh, to add? Can, yeah. Yeah, no, Sian, I actually wanted to ask you a question about your mm -hmm. um, your project, if you don't mind, because mm -hmm. obviously, um, air pollution and whenever you do 
because a lot of what we do tends to be around um, voting, democratic engagement, political and media literacy, which isn't hard for people to understand why everyone should get involved in democracy and media and all that kind of stuff. Like it's 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 kind of given. So the kind of the hard graft of making it inclusive is almost quite an easy step to take. But with something like what you're talking about in regards to air pollution and so forth, can become very complex very quickly, very scientific. And one of the biggest issues with things like climate change, sustainability, etc., is that the moment you become too scientific, or well, you end up isolating a load of people. And then the problem, of course, being that if you're not too scientific, then you're open to criticism and misinterpretation, et cetera, et cetera. So I was wondering with your project, mm -hmm. um, how did you build that community of change makers whilst also keeping that kind of scientific evidence base that solidified mm -hmm. your campaign? Yeah. Um, how, how did you keep that balance between including everybody, but at the same time, making sure that the science held up and you you were pushing forward a credible campaign, which is quite a hard thing to balance sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thanks, Matteo, for, for the question. Uh, you know, every time that you are making a, a change or you are making a campaign, to, uh, mm. you have also to think about sustainability. Okay, we are here, we are having a campaign in the main square in Pristina, we are involving a thousand of people, and what what's next? Mm. So how how we how we approach this was that uh, those uh, those um, um, materials that were uh, given to people in the main square for them to measure air quality because it's it's a basic uh, when you think of it it's a basic information you just need to know what is the uh, the measure normal and if it passes that number then the 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 air quality is is bad this is all mm -hmm. that to, to to know uh, as a uh, as a, uh, a a civic uh, uh, as a as a very uh, it's a basic need actually and what cool. we did was that we were uh, um, going into school and we were introducing youngsters we were introducing children with uh, with uh, those machines so they were very easy machines you can use it you can do it you can measure their quality out around on your school. So uh, this is how we wanted to make sure that um, the 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 cause uh, will will move, that the people will be aware, and also we are investing in our children. So back then, when I was in school, I didn't know about air quality because it wasn't a, a, a problem back then. But now we are no, right. nor I. <laughs> yeah, we are. No, we I, are mean, um, I mean, it was probably a problem, but nobody talked about it. Yeah, exactly. And we are raising now children that uh, they are facing every day the, the air quality. So what we did, we were organizing some trainings within the school. We're giving them mm. things to the children and teach them the basics. So from 1 to 12, it's very good air quality. From 12 to 20, it's average. And from 20 to 40, it's very bad air quality. You can have this machine and you can go out uh, of your school uh, and and uh, like just uh, just around your school and be back and tell your 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 friends what is the air quality today in in our city and around uh, around our school. And that was the, the way that we wanted to make sure that um, the initiative will will move the the people will uh will um will uh, the people are aware just from from young ages and you can see also what was very surprising uh, uh was that they were so excited that they can be able to to do such a measurement they were back to their uh fam the family and the parents and were telling about the initiative and what was the most surprising thing that they organized a protest by themselves. So it was a protest organized by children aged 10 to 12. It wasn't in our planet. I mean, it was, they just called up. <laughs> we are going in the main square to ask the mayor, please help us. That, that was, the, that was the, the most exciting part. We were in phone like, really? Okay, we'll join you. But it it was a surprise that they were after that they, they they got involved, and also they saw how bad it is. They also mm -hmm. to fight and to go to the mayor and say that hey, we want to uh, we want to say to you that please do something. Mm -hmm. 
for 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 uh, for our help. Yeah. Uh, well, that's how you know it was a success. I mean, that's probably the best marker I'd say for success when you've got communities and self organizing. And I think that's the that's probably one of the hardest things to achieve. Not that you're going out to achieve that. It was just a happy coincidence. But by far, like building a community of change makers is hard enough. Yeah. Um, the kind of step above that almost is having them self-organize to enact change. And it just shows well, credits to you to show how the how the kind of impact of um of of just showing them the truth. And it's ironic, you're just showing them what they've been breathing in. You're just putting a number to it and you're putting a, a rating on it. And once things like that start to become visible and they start to see it, it just becomes a bit more um more real almost in a weird way because air quality is a, is a thing that everyone breathes but you don't ever consider it or think about it um just because you can't see it so it, it just becomes so you start to put a visual number or a visual gauge to do something i mean i remember we had something not we didn't have a protest obviously but um with um the once once we released the drill minister track for our program mm -hmm. um we um obviously within that a drill minister was asking calling uh young people that wanted to put a couple of um bars or a couple of lines to to the music of this track and so we started getting people coming in but we started getting random people from say scotland manchester and so forth sending it in which is a bit which is again that kind of uh, almost like self-development of the campaign that you start to see where you know you've done something that is kind of almost taking up a life of its own Mm -hmm. um, where you're not directly involved. And I think one of the best things about when you've successfully built this kind of community is that you can almost let go a little bit and mm -hmm. things will start to happen by themselves. Not necessarily in the best, most organized way, but things will start to develop. It will start to get picked up in different places because the campaign for us was purely London-centric. It was about uh, young people in socially deprived areas in London. So we never actually targeted Manchester, Liverpool and all them areas. But we started to get pick up in those areas just purely organically um and like with what you're saying that's almost like a really good good product of success um and it'd be great by the way if any of these sort of 45 people that are sitting yeah. listening listening to us rabbit on um if you've got a story that you'd like to share yeah. um please feel free to join the discussion by clicking the share your audio and video um button um but we're also we have, waiting for someone. Yeah, we have a question. No, it's not a question. Oh, we have a question. Um, yeah, we have Zoran. Um, what if the purpose isn't seen as a common one? We work with youth from foster care. Do you have any experience of such partial campaigns? Yeah. Um, okay. Zuzana, if you would like to share uh, your work with foster care and uh, the the purpose of your chain that you want to make. Maybe we can help you more, but we, I would like to see what Zoran uh, actually uh, shared. Oh, there we uh, go. We'll be back to Zoran then. Hi, hi Susanna. Hey, uh, well, the, the, the Zoran's link is absolutely amazing and the, the work that they drink. Actually, my question was uh, more about what, what you say about are the real common problems like climate change, like engagement in uh, political um, matters and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. And we work um, in a sector of foster care, mostly we empower children through cooking, not only children, but also youth and people who emancipated from foster care. And this is not seen as a problem, uh, as this is a very marginal one. Uh, because it's like um, uh, you know, promile of uh, of the children at this age. So it's very hard to build um, consciousness of the problem. So, what do you have any experience in such a that, that that's why I call it the partial uh, problem because it's not something that affects. The whole society of course mm -hmm. it it does but it's not felt anyhow mm -hmm. so uh you would uh you would ask that you would like to make people know about uh the, the yes the, uh, the awareness is one of the one of the issues of course but it's uh harder to engage people if, in any kind of action 
if uh, they don't see a purpose in acting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Matteo, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, yeah, if you wouldn't mind. So um, it's one of the, um, so we in the UK, I mean, first, first of all, m most of what we do is around democratic participation just in general. Uh, oh, you're gone, uh, Susanna. I hope, I hope you're still there. But um, yeah, so most of, most of what we do is, is around um, democratic engagement just in general. But we do work with um, one specific, or started working with one specific group um, mm -hmm with something an organization called the uh the traveler movement which in the uk primarily works um with combating stereotypes and helping irish travelers um and and roma communities in the uk uh, it's a very niche issue much like what you're describing most people don't know the these communities exist most people have very negative stereotypes about these communities yeah. Um, and we're doing a program, and we're, I'm actually speaking at an event for them tomorrow, specifically around how to combat misinformation around these communities. And I guess the best way to answer your question is that you need to take your issue and find a way to link it to everybody else. So almost, first of all, humanize the issue so that everyone can understand what you're talking about, but also try and put everybody that you're targeting, so the general person in the shoes of this individual you're, you're trying to deal with. So if it is around, say, foster care, you need to explain to people how foster, like, what's the problem with youth in foster care? Like, what is the issue trying to target in a way that everyone can understand? Mm -hmm. Some of the best examples of this I've seen is in video and animations. I don't know if, you, if anyone here has seen this video, but it was of a, uh, basically it's an iPhone video, of a uh, refugee essentially coming from i think it was libya or somewhere and then traveling across the mediterranean to uh, greece during the kind of the height of the migrant crisis when the media were covering the migrant crisis rather and the video was really interesting because it was basically from this iphone of this migrant it was taking you through uh, losing connection uh, getting a call from the dad but can't reach him um, losing connection sort of taking videos of like the sea being rough and then jump uh, again thrown into the water and it was kind of a harrowing but really realistic portrayal of these of a migrant crossing the Mediterranean. And what was interesting is that that was taken from real accounts from migrants crossing the Med. And it gave an individual that will never have to go through such trauma the ability to experience, you know, one hundredth of what that trauma could be like. Suddenly you humanize these people and you start to understand why this issue is important. So you kind of almost have to try and tug at people's emotions. So much like with uh, your work around youth and foster care, that why is this an issue that people need to care about? How can you put that issue emotionally in front of those individuals that have never gone through foster care and link them and say, this is an issue you've got to care about? Um, because you can never directly put people into their shoes. But what you can do is show them the emotional argument and why this is an issue from the perspective of that young person in foster care. Now, one thing that could be interesting is bringing, bringing together young people in foster care, young people not in foster care, to have those communications, almost like a pen pal thing, where you start to get them to talk to each other, uh, and then they can share stories and potentially become friends. So you start to sort of humanize that group that you're trying to support is, I guess, hopefully that's helpful, yeah. but that's yeah. kind of the way I'd yeah, I totally with, yeah, yeah, with you, Matteo, and uh, thank you, Susanna, for bringing it. Uh, it's very difficult, uh, as you said, to bring people together when they you cannot touch them directly and you cannot touch their health, their family, or anything directly to them. But using the theory, as Matteo said, uh, you can, as, as you saw from our our um, small game, uh, people mostly care about uh, love, about uh, empathy, about security. So you should take those uh, those um, uh, needs and turn them into maybe share a story of one of the, your uh, children or one of your uh, people that you are working uh, for and use this as uh, people can see and can feel the empathy with uh, with uh, with them. So you can uh, so, uh, any story that during on your work days will touch you then most probably will touch uh, 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 an amount of uh, a large amount of people so you can use that story and make people aware on uh, the, your issue that you want to to move forward 
Okay, if we uh, if we don't have anyone uh, that uh, want to share the story, we have also something to share with you. So I'll go back to the uh, to the presentation, and we'll talk about critical thinking. So it is very important to uh, and we have then Zoran, right? Okay, Zoran, you want to share something with us? Uh, I can. Uh, sorry, just a second. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so um, I shared that link in a chat, uh, and it's quite demanding and technical, but maybe something can be interesting or useful for others. So it's a video interaction uh, platform, I mean computer interaction, uh, digital, uh, interactive digital content, where people can learn about how complicated issue of climate change and decarbonization and air pollution is. And it was a huge coalition, uh, so it's not something that small or medium-sized organizations can replicate. But uh, uh -huh. it's, it's important that we collected the data first uh, for two years and then uh, in terms of uh, energy generation and energy consumption mm -hmm. and potential scenarios. And then we uh, expose those data, that data to uh, academia, to public sector, to ministries, uh, to polluters, uh, mm -hmm. and collect their, uh, their uh, feedback. Uh, and then uh, we created this um, advocacy educational tool in the shape of a video game that you can try to play, it's on the link. Um, uh, only with this verified data. So um, it, mm -hmm. it, gives, it gives you much more uh, credibility in advocacy. Yeah. If, uh, if you attack yourself and you, you let other people attack your data and, and conclusion and scenarios. So that's all what I wanted to, to say now. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Zoran. You have mentioned all the all the uh, needed information for, uh, for people to trust you. You need credibility. You need to trust people in your data. And this is a very simple way, uh, because I was checking shortly, uh, the website is a very uh, good way to present to, to people. Very uh, straight to the point, easy and very uh, simple yeah because people now they don't have time to read more and and do research and if you present them with the uh, graphics short video 30 seconds they will be willing to, to and you and you offer them to dig deeper i mean yeah if they want links to and sources yeah yeah links and sources great thank you zaran thank was you Okay, uh, so we have uh, 50 minutes till uh, our session uh, is over. So we are going in the third step, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning. Uh, we talked about identifying uh, social needs. Uh, then uh, we uh, talked about the three main things that we we should take care when we want uh, civil, uh, we want more civil engagement. And then we have the the third one, which is using critical thinking for media literacy. I mean, using critical thinking is basically uh, much needed in every action but especially uh in uh in using um using it for our media literacy i know that uh coronavirus has uh, uh brought us uh in uh, and changed us in many levels and uh one of them is also media how media affected our life and especially in the beginning uh when media played a really good role on informing us uh on uh what the situation was and how we should protect ourselves and uh um how we should take care of, of ourselves and our family in the other hand there were a lot of materials out there that was uh, playing a very uh, a crucial uh, role on uh, our mental health, how we saw the disease, how we saw the, the uh, uh, crisis uh, over there and how we took care of her family. Uh, together we are going uh, to, um, I've written down here 10 steps to identify fake news. So uh, 
those are very basic steps that you can use them at um, any news. Uh, I know that you are going to go to another session to talk about Facebook, TikTok, and also other um, other uh, media channels. But in general, we are facing news every day. We are up here in our phones, in our laptops, and most of the things that we see is news. So how to identify fake news? First of all, we were also talking about um, emotional reactions. Uh, talking about emotional reactions will, will give you the, the first, the first um, um, when, you, when, you see, when you see a news in the first sight, you can see that if they are using uh, your emotions uh, to, uh, to make you read more about that news, that could be something that um, might uh, give you um, a signal that can be a fake news. And Matteo, please, if you, I know that you also uh, are experienced in media literacy and uh, using critical thinking, if you want to add anything in between, please. Uh, uh, talking about fake news and misinformation has been, has been my jam since coronavirus started, so more than happy. Yeah, and if you want to add more than, than uh, 10, 10 stuff, please do. Uh, so look at look at the the news. Uh, is it powerful? Uh, are you nervous? Is it uh, making you angry? Is it making you very scared or any other uh, any other emotions that uh, you uh, that the news by just by the title would uh, would affect your uh, your mood? Um, the other thing is uh, think about how. Uh, how you you saw this news? Like, was it website promoted, uh, and how was appeared on on social media? Uh, this goes also with the, also uh, when you you are looking on YouTube or you are looking uh, uh, other um, uh, other news uh, and something pops up or pops down when you are reading something. So be careful. The news that you are going through is it popped up? or is it something that you are searching for or the way how this materials this materials material was shown to you um the third step is view the main title or message uh three things that you should take care of here is uh is uh, the title using a lot of uh Foundations uh, or letters that are with the uh, uh, caps lock letters uh, or emphases. The second thing that you should look in the title is: um, is there any secret be behind the, the the title? And uh, if they want you to 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 go go deeper in that in that news, because uh, most of the the the. Uh, articles that are, are out there and are, are there for just to have some clicks. They will use a title, a uh, very provoc provocative title, and I uh, will drag you to the to the news inside. So be aware. And the other thing is, don't stop stop at the title. Keep researching. So you should keep researching, and we can we can uh, still discuss about this researching and also other other points that we are going to discuss. Um, is the information created for easy distribution, like a meme? So there are also some screenshots uh, and some. Uh, some screenshots and some things that you should um, you should avoid. Uh, see the sources of information uh, as a known source, contains the author names, and go to about us to, to talk about that. And also the other ten, uh, five other things. Uh, do you have today's data uh, and to evalu evaluate that news? The other thing is uh does the example cite some sources including official and uh also expert sources this is very important to know if the information that you have got is the right one and also is there a hyperlink example to other quality sources and also here are down there in the 10 point you can have some uh examples uh, and fact checking sites such as 
uh, fact checks if you want to do a fact check uh, shortly. Yeah, Matteo? Yeah, no, thank you for that. That's really um, a quite a concise list on dealing with um, fake or false news. Um, a couple of things that uh, might be worth a mention is identifying what type of, of mis or, or misinformation or false news is out there. So the kind of three main definitions at the moment that exist within sort of media literacy circles are misinformation, disinformation and malinformation, where misinformation is kind of is non-factual information that's being shared almost by accident. So in the UK, for example, we had um, a series of a string of celebrities sharing mm -hmm. supposed articles that coronavirus didn't actually exist and it was 5G all along and all this kind of nonsense, which of course is completely untrue. Um, but they were sharing it out of ignorance more than out of malicious intent. Mm -hmm. um, disinformation is the malicious intent bit. So understanding that the person that's created this bit of information or that's trying to share this bit of misinformation is doing it maliciously. So uh, I don't know, a state actor creating propaganda to try and attack a specific politician mm -hmm. or uh, a far right group, for example, or a far left group creating something specifically to target or, or denigrate a politician with, with false information. Um, to to change a result or whatever else, and then malinformation is true information that has no relevance in the conversation, but it's trying to discredit the specific politician, journalist, or, or NGO. So, for example, we worked with a uh, an organisation in Moldova where uh, this this uh, channel was telling us we were running a a, um, a workshop with them on media literacy. Mm -hmm. And they were telling us that one bit of malinformation that was circulating was one of the opposition leaders. Um, she is a, um, a woman and they spread a rumor that she wasn't married, which was true, um, but absolutely has zero relevance to her ability to be a leader or a politician. Yeah. So it's true information taken out of context to use as almost like a weapon to attack this person. Yeah. Um, so it can also be true information but media literacy also comes into true information, but how relevant is it? You know, how relevant is how many kids a politician has to them being a good leader, or if they're married or not to being a good leader? Like that, that can also be, be used to misinform people or, or to influence people. Um, and the other thing to bring up, which I think I mentioned at the beginning, was around um, bias. Um, that all of these things are, and what you mentioned, Sam, is, 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 is exactly 100%. The only thing is that we've also got to understand our biases. So when you look at things like, you know, so, and if you were to ask me, I don't know what what dessert you should have for lunch today. I was I'm going to say something to do with chocolate because my bias is towards chocolate. I like the dessert. I like chocolate. That's that's my thing. Yeah. That's a bias though. It's a bias that I have towards a specific thing, yeah. which is harmless. But biases can become harmful when they're down towards religion, you know, race, nationality, whatever else. And it's important for us to all understand that we all have biases, mm -hmm. and biases influence how critical we are, depending on how true we want that bit of information to be yeah absolutely agree absolutely agree i mean uh, i also can see that uh Tzadar, uh, if i i'm pronouncing the name uh, right uh shared with us a platform do one brave thing uh where we help you to uh counter radicalization and we have a plugin for checking articles so it's great uh great materials thank you for sharing so you can go there and check articles for for uh before sharing them and just uh uh three minutes before uh uh like uh coming up to to um and conclusion so we were talking today uh about uh identifying the social needs and i really hope that that will help you identify the need back when you go to your organization to your group of people that you are working to and you will have a uh, success and uh finding the right people so going through uh one one cause and how to keep them engaged and how we talked also about how to keep our uh, our initiative uh, sustain. We talked about also the sustainability of finding the right people, and also be careful of, of uh, fake real news because I know that uh, your your campaigns will can be all online, can be um, offline, or can be both. So we should uh, take into consideration. Uh, and not to make an initiative ba based on on uh, such a something like fake news. Um, 
this is all uh, i'm sharing here my email i know that you uh, also mateo shared uh, his email and uh, we are open for questions uh at any time that you think that we can help uh, uh please do uh do uh, uh write us for me it was a pleasure to be here with you for with uh 40 for people mostly online for uh, 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 more than one and a half hour. And thank you, Hannah, for assisting. Uh, and uh, thank you, Matteo, for uh, all the questions and all the materials that you provided. It was a pleasure for me to be here.